everything that is done today has already been directed and orchestrated by Dr. Billy Bell. Yeah. So y'all know whatever happens today, it's because he said yeah. it was going to happen that way. So at this time, Dr. Tony Matthews is going to come and tell us what Dr. Bell told him better happen today. Amen. <laughs>
Let us talk to God. Our Father and our God, the Maker and the Creator of all good and perfect gifts. God, it is again that we, your children, have come before your throne of grace. And God, before we ask for anything, we want to thank you for everything. God, even when situations are bad, we can thank you because you're still good. You're not good contingent or based on what we're going through. You're good just because you're God. And therefore, since you're God all the time, you are also good all the time. And for that, we just want to say thank you. God, we thank you for one life of Billy Jobel. Father God, and your servant, your son, who God has left many to you. We thank you, God, not because he died, but we thank you because he lived. And God, we thank you that his living showed the light to you, God. We thank you, God, that in his selflessness, he chose to serve you, God. We thank you for the work that he's done. We thank you for the family you blessed him with, God. We thank you for the friends that he gathered. We thank you for the lives he touched. God, we just say thank you right now. For God, even though we love him, we know that you love him most. And even though, God, we understand that there is a prepared place for prepared people,
and to the Bell family. We are so delighted to be here this morning. <laughs> February 1st, 2020, North Garland Baptist Fellowship, 5840 North Garland Avenue, Garland, Texas, 75044. Dr. Tony Matthews, Senior Pastor. Resolution. In loving memory of Dr. Billy Dale, to Brother Billy's entire family, words really cannot express my deep sympathy that I have for you during your time of grief. The members of North Garland Baptist Fellowship and I commit you to him who loves you and understands your grief, pain, and loss. You have our sincere prayers. Whereas the passing of Brother Billy has left us deeply saddened, he will be missed, but not forgotten. Although Dr. Bell united with North Garland Baptist Fellowship after retiring from an illustrious career of pastoring, he was and is a longtime friend of North Garland's pastor and several of its members. We were so blessed to see how God used Dr. Bell over the years. He was a pastor to pastors, an outstanding professor, and a statesman who loved missions and evangelism. Brother Billy was a devoted husband, father, and a grandfather, and has literally helped thousands of people over the course of his ministerial career. Whereas we believe the words of Jesus in John 14 that encourages us to let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. Therefore, be it resolved, that we bow in humble submission to the will of God, remembering his word, which teaches us that to be absent from the body is to be at home with the Lord. May you find strength and comfort in the word of God and in the words of Billy himself, who in his last days here on earth said that he was ready to submit to God's will, no matter what. He transitioned to his heavenly home with peace that surpasses all understanding. Mm -hmm. Sister Bell and family, we are here for you. We are lifting your family in prayer, praying that we will all comfort and give you strength in the days of day. I'm um, submitted by Dr. Arnold Baptist Fellowship, Dr. Tony Matthews, Senior Pastor. Mm -hmm. And a copy of this resolution will be placed in our church records. Mm -hmm. I would also like to acknowledge um, resolutions. Um, Journey Baptist Church in Seapill, Living Waters Seventh Day Adventist Church, and again from North Carolina Baptist Fellowship, and also from New Creation Baptist Church. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the resolution and the acknowledgement of the same. We're up now to our acknowledgments and remarks. And um, if someone came in late, if you did not um, uh, meet with the ministers uh, prior to the service, Dr. Bell requested two minutes. And if you were out here on the platform, I'm sorry about when we are, you can um, speak to this microphone right here. Um, in theology, we have something called an adiaphora. That's something that is neither permitted or prohibited in Scripture. And we have some things that um, in life that the Bible is silent on. One thing about the comments, again, is um, we do have a prohibition not to pass too many. Amen. <laughs> not an adiaphora, but our comments. Praise the Lord. Come on. About the comments. Thank you. This is the day, the 32nd day of 2020. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I had the privilege of working with Dr. Bell for many years. 
I assessed him as the church planter, he and his wife, and then worked with him as his church starter when the New Creation Bible Church began, and then working with him over the years as church planting consultant for African American churches with the DBA and the BTCT. So on behalf of Dr. David Hardage, Executive Director, Dr. Michael Bell, Dr. Michael Evans, President for the Baptist General Convention of Texas, and all of our friends and pastors, we love you, Sister Joyce, and family. God bless you. Amen. Samuel 3, 38 says, And the king said to his servants, Know ye not, there is a prince and a great man fallen this day in Israel. Billy Bell was such a man to me, to us. My name is Scott Coleman. I work at the Dallas Baptist Association, and it was my privilege to serve with Dr. Bell there for over 13 years. Brother Bell joined the DBA church planting team in June of 2006 after having started New Creation in, uh, two, in just four years earlier in 2002. He knew and he lived church planting and church pastoring. During our time together, Brother Bell was part of a team that started scores of churches, but he specifically counseled and coached 77 of those during his time working with DBA. Every, every Monday morning. 
There was a new church planter that was there. There was a, a pastor that was wanting to bring in another church, a, a friendly church that might want to affiliate with DBA. There was another pastor that had a question about a community ministry. Three times before our meeting even began, I said, you know who you need to talk to? Dr. Billy Bell. Mm -hmm. A prince and a great man, a pastor and a planter, a mentor and a friend. No matter what any of us say up here today, it won't be enough. But that's okay, because it's what Jesus says about our brother Billy Bell that matters the most. Jesus ends the story this way in the book of Matthew. He says, Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Then the Lord has said to our friend Billy, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Just dawned on me why uh, Joanne. 
must call me. And if this has been orchestrated by Billy Bell, I understand now. Because of all the disciples, all the Timothys that, that were birthed and, and, and nurtured by, by Dr. B, I was probably his worst student. <laughs> I challenged him more, gave him more trouble. For, from 2002 to 2003, it was, come on, Morris, read it for yourself. Read it for yourself. Read it for yourself. Read it. Read it. So that's the war. What does the word of God say, Mark? What does the word of God say? And that was me. It, it was true. Uh, the, there's a saying that says, when the pupil is ready, the teacher will appear. And when I was ready, just a fledgling new doctor, joint pastor uh, at a church in the hood called the Mount, uh, then he showed up because I knew something was wrong but didn't know what it was. I didn't know what was wrong with the polity, what was wrong with the adherence to God's word. And a, and a mentor is not someone who gives advice. A mentor is someone whose advice you follow. And that was different when he told me the truth. I started falling into it. Now I am in a minute his son's his legacy. So I want to ask for a moment, if all the Timothy disciples in this room would for a moment stand on your feet. Timothy disciple, huh? As I come on, stand on up. You know it's you. Stand on up. I want us all. Because some of you guys stand fuller, you know, and Pastor Miller, many of you gentlemen were part of his teaching me and bringing me from darkness to light. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. We have the privilege, men, many men of being able to say, we lived in the days of Billy Bell. We lived in the days when Bell walked the earth. And for me and my little church, what we do when we, we, we have someone live like he did, we stand on our feet and give an ovation that lasts all the lives. As we say, well done, thou good and faithful sir. We echo what God is saying. Joyce Bell. Billy Bell's pastor, teacher, evangelist, and church planner, mentor, and father to an innumerable company of daughters and, and, and sons, and, and is an officer in the Lord's Army, an ambassador, and commander, temporarily stationed on this planet. I stand before you now to acknowledge before all these witnesses that he would not have been able to be such a prolific soldier in God's army if it were not for you. Source. It would not have been possible that God had not used you in such a magnificent fashion to have a dream and then you made that dream come true by all the work we did. In America, we see that there's a flag that is given for everyone that serves in our armed forces. But Pastor Bell was a member of another army and he fought under another flag. That flag is the flag that all of us fight under. Joyce and one of the members of Calvary go to glory and a call back to the front lines to go home and the home point celebration we make a special presentation at some point. In like manner the men and women who served in the armed forces of heaven fly under this flag. Therefore it is with the thanks and gratitude of a grateful nation of disciples, sons and daughters, one and all, that we present to you in this, this small token of our esteem but the prayer that our, com our commander in chief would embrace and hold you and Kim and the rest of your family tightly in his arms as he walks us through the valley we must now go through. Joyce, thank you mm -hmm. for lending Dr. Billy Bell to me mm -hmm. and to the rest of us. He will never be forgotten. Mm -hmm. And we are all no. your family.
Lily was a sales consultant at Taylor Park in Marco Cliff, where he used his gift of gab to sell me a Pontiac, new Pontiac Bible. <laughs> After lots of wheeling and feeling, I soon learned what was known, uh, what Pontiac was known for. Well made, family friendly, good quality, and classic. <laughs> he was a single dad. Me and my family were new to the area as I started out in my banking career. I became his banker. He became my friend. We had a lot in common. We both served in the military. We were followers of Christ and in all things church. We believed in strong family values. And from time to time, before Billy Joe was a pastor, we enjoyed a good talk. Our differences made for a strong brotherhood. Billy was cool, level-headed, demeanor was a great match to my loud, sometimes cocky approach to business and family. <laughs> my wife, Maddie, never worried if I was with Billy Joe. She duly had my back. And I can't speak for Joyce. Uh, she might have been thinking Billy's out with that crazy Joyce. <laughs> But she knew I had his back. <laughs> Billy's friendship has been a part of my family and life for a long time. I can remember telling my kids that when they were younger, if something happened to me, go call Billy Joe. Mm -hmm. He's seen my family in births, deaths, weddings, funeral, holidays, celebrations, and everyday problems. Billy not only welcomed me to not only welcomed me to Dallas, but he welcomed me and my family to his life. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I'm gonna close, I'm really gonna miss you by Smokey Roberts. Mm -hmm. In your finest hour, I was there with you. And without things, you things won't be the same. But there's a how power that we answer to. And he heard him calling your name. Really gonna miss you. Everything about you. Your smile face. And I want you all to know. Be strong. Goodbye, my brother.
you will give remarks representing the family on my behalf. Now, my brother knew that I never wanted to get up, ever, <laughs> at a funeral to speak, but he gave me this, this assignment anyway. <laughs>
for him long. But if you do, remember Washington Irving's quote. Hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hey! <laughs> 
didn't ask to see my sermon before he uh, agreed to let me preach, but I certainly have been honored and humbled by this and just have such a joy in having worked with Billy Bell for these 13 years. I tell you, what a blessing we all have received in knowing Billy Bell and how he has impacted our lives. Learning from him, watching how he served the Lord, seeing his endurance. I mean, he amazed all of us. He amazed his doctors of how he was able to keep going on. God just did amazing things. I, I told him often, I said, Billy, you inspire me all the time. You inspire me all the time. When he went into the hospital this last time, I went over to the hospital and Joyce was there and uh, some of the family and they updated me and of course Billy was not able to respond. He was conscious, but Joyce said the doctor has said he may be able to hear us. He probably does hear us. And so I took a moment to go over to his hospital bed and, and just to tell him how much he meant to me and how blessed I have been to serve alongside him, how much I've learned from him, and how I've seen God use him and just surprising in it wonderful ways. And then I prayed with him and just thanked God and uh, knew his life was in God's hand. And sometime soon, God was going to call him home and say, well done, good and faithful servant. And while I was praying, his breathing changed dramatically. It was, it was like he was letting me know he was hearing the prayer and he was praying with me. And when I got back to the office, God had been by and and he had had the same experience. I tell you, to his last breath, he was living for God's glory. What a wonderful example. You know, before Billy became a pastor, he was a car salesman, as has been said by his friend. And he apparently was a really good one. He won many awards and honors. I mean, he uh, had a master salesman, an Atlas Award, a Top 20. I mean, he, he had all kinds of awards. I walked into his office this past week just to kind of walk around and remember Billy. And I noticed on the side, I never noticed it before because he kind of had them off to the side, but he had all those awards over on the side. And I looked at them and just amazed. What a great car salesman he was. What I've heard about him is he was an honest car salesman. Yeah. Not all car salesmen are honest, are they? <laughs> but he was an honest one, and he would tell them the way it was. And uh, he set records. Scott and I had a privilege a few days ago to sit down with Joyce in my office, and we talked with her, just re reminisced about Billy and heard more about their life together over uh, almost 40 years they've been married. And uh, I asked Joyce, well, how did you meet Billy? She said, he sold me a car. <laughs> My friend had a relative had recommended that she go see Billy, and he sold her a car. And, uh, and that kind of began their relationship, and it wasn't too long till he married her. Now, she said, he set her up on 42 months of payments. Little did he know he was going to have to make most of those payments. <laughs> And uh, I, if 
fact, there's one time uh, uh, Joy said to Billy, said, now, Billy, are you listening to me? He said, I'm listening. She said, well, why aren't you doing what I'm asking? He said, I'm listening. <laughs> I knew Joy stuck Billy a lot because sometimes we were playing on things. I said, now, Billy, do you know how to do this on the computer or whatever? He'd say, well, Joyce can help me. And uh, she would help him in so many things. In fact, she said that many times Billy would get himself in these predicaments, meaning things that he was supposed to do, he didn't know how to do. And so Joyce would figure it out that Joyce helped him in so many, many ways. He was converted at age 40. He joined the church as a child, he said, but by his own testimony, it was when in a service his pastor, uh, Dr. Brown was preaching a message entitled, Are You Saved? And he said that in that message, he clearly heard the gospel for the first time, and he immediately accepted Christ in his heart. And I tell you, the heart of all of this today is, if there is anyone here who has never been saved, then Billy wants to make sure in his uh, service, in his honor, that you are hearing the gospel. And one of the ways that I think is most powerful is to, to just show you what the gospel has done in Billy's life and what God has done through him. And also there will be an opportunity that if you've never received Christ, that uh, we invite you to receive him. That is the greatest gift of all. And Billy is as great a man be, of a great man as he is, it was because of Christ. He would be the first to say that. Jesus Christ has made the difference in his life. And his favorite verse is the one that Johnny quoted a moment ago, Romans 12, 1 and 2, where it talks about how because of the mercies of God, that we are to present ourselves as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable and pleasing to God. That we are to lay our life on the altar that means that we are to give all of ourselves to Him. And that was what Billy did when he was 40 years old. I mean, when he heard the gospel, he immediately responded. And he laid it all on the altar. And throughout his life, till his last breath, he never backed off of that commitment. I thought of Luke 9, 62, where Jesus said, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the service in the kingdom of God. But I tell you, Billy is one of those fit for the kingdom of God because he never looked back. He, he laid his life on the altar and he gave it his all every moment of every day. I tell you, he was a tremendous servant of God. He was an inspiration. God gave him strength to serve him. But he felt great and when he didn't feel so good. He was amazing. He, he would share as our staff would meet in prayer every morning just how God was giving him strength. Sometimes he would, he would go to an assignment and he was not feeling well at all. But he knew when the time came that he needed to get up to the pulpit or to the podium that God would give him strength. And God did that over and over again. He said strength he didn't have, but God gave it to him. And he would say often, Joyce said, I'll be ready. You know, whatever that assignment was, I'll be ready. Because he had learned that he could trust God to give him the strength when that time came. He, he never questioned God. He trusted him in all circumstances. I believe the last sermon he preached was for his good friend, Brother Timothy Wilbert, Bible Way Community Mission of Baptist Church in Burbank. The last time I heard Billy Bell preach was about a year ago when he preached at New Creation Bible Church. It was his retirement Sunday. It was his last Sunday there. When Ellen and I arrived at the church, we walked into the auditorium and we saw on the stage in sanctuary uh, some things there, and they were covered in tarps. And we're trying to figure, what is up there? You know, is that some... Uh, gift is going to be given. Is that some of these furniture? What is up there? And uh, so when I went to the office to pray with Billy before the service, I noticed that uh, on top of his suit he was wearing a robe, like what a shepherd would wear. 
and he had a staff like a shepherd would carry. And when I was walking into the uh, sanctuary afterwards, I could see under the uh, tarp were some sheep. I think Dean Brown made those up in just a couple days. He got them ready to go. And, and so there were sheep up there. And when he got up to preach, as he often did, as always, he's a great communicator, very uh, creative. And so they pulled the tarps off, and there were, I think, about three sheep. I mean, they really looked like sheep. And, uh, and he preached a message about being a shepherd to the God to God's flock, being a shepherd. And one of the things I'll never forget is he talked about how if you're really a shepherd like you ought to be, you're getting close to your sheep, and you start to smell like your sheep. That's what he talked about. He said that a good shepherd smells like his sheep. I tell you, as I thought about that, I thought, man, what a great example of a shepherd was Billy Bell. I think many of us felt that he shepherded us. I was officially his boss, but uh, Scott said, I think we were peers on the same team. And he shepherded me. I learned so much from him. I, I would often go in his office and say, Billy, I need your advice. And we'd talk and pray. He always gave me wise advice. He was a great shepherd. I think he saw his main calling and task as a pastor was to be a shepherd. I, I think of Billy when I think of what God said to the prophet Jeremiah. He said, then I will give you shepherds after my own heart who will lead you with knowledge and understanding. That's the kind of shepherd Billy was. After God's own heart led with knowledge and understanding. Uh, the passage I want to use for this message is 1 Peter 5, 2 through 4. It talks about being a shepherd. And I want you to notice how well this chapter describes Dr. Billy Bell. Here's what Peter said. He, he, in verse 1, he talks about appealing to them, the elders of the church. And he is making an urgent appeal. And here is his appeal, beginning in verse 2. He said, Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care. Serving as, serving as overseers, not because you must, but because you're willing, as God wants you to be, not greedy for money, but eager to serve, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. Yeah. Isn't that passage true yes. about our brother in Christ? Yes. It is a heartfelt appeal that Peter makes. He says, be shepherds of God's flock. There's nothing more important that we can do than to be a shepherd of God's flock. There are many times in the Bible it says that God is our shepherd. David said that the Lord is my shepherd. Isaiah talked about how God is our shepherd. And he said in chapter 40, he tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. Mm. God is the chief shepherd. Mm. And we are shepherds under him. So pastors are sheep and also shepherds, yeah. under shepherds. And he is our chief shepherd. He is the one with all the authority and we are under his authority. And we do what he tells us to do. Jesus talked about in John 10 how he is the good shepherd. And he talks about his relationship with the sheep. He says, I know my sheep and they know me. And he says, and I lead them. And he speaks to them. And he says several times, if they hear my voice, they know my voice. And they follow me. And so that relationship of God is our shepherd was that he loves us and knows us. And he speaks to us and he guides us. But we have two responsibilities, Jesus said. We're to listen and we're to follow. We're to listen and we're to follow. That's exactly what Bill and Bill did. Peter gave, after the challenge of being a shepherd, he gave three sets of opposites of phrases. 
to describe what is a good shepherd and what is not a good shepherd. And so he says in this passage, not this, but this. He said, not that because you must, you feel obligated, but because you're willing, as God wants you to be. Yeah. Not because you're greedy for money, but because you are eager to serve. Yeah. And not because you are lording it over those entrusted to you, but because you're a an example to the flock. Not this, but this. Yeah. Think about what Peter was saying. Not because you must, out of a sense of duty or obligation, the idea that you're doing something because you have to or by force, compulsion, unwilling. Peter said, not that. Instead, he said, a shepherd should do it willingly. It, it means gladly. It means with joy and happiness. In the obituary, there's a testimony of Billy. When he was saved, it says at that point, his ministry began to have a meaning and purpose far beyond one out of duty or obligation, but a passion and zeal for teaching God's Word that would expand beyond Dallas and Rockwell counties. Isn't that exactly what Peter's talking about? Not forced, not unwillingly, but willingly. A passion, a zeal. Not greedy for money, but eager to serve. Literally, that, that means that we work for pay. We work for mere pay. If that's all you're working for in your life, you're, you're really selling your life short. Life, life's not about money. You can't take it with you. And pastors don't work for money. Now, I do want to say you ought to pay your pastor, pay him well. The Bible teaches that you ought to take care of it so he can give his very best to the work. But I can tell you, he's not working for the money. One time when I was pastor in Garland, I had a businessman who was a very successful salesman. He, he came to me and says, you know, Bob, I think that we could probably accomplish more if, if we did like we do in the sales that we give a commission. And so let's, let's pay our staff based upon how many results they have, how many people that went to Christ, how many people that went all through this and said, man, we, we can really get them motivated to really be on fire for that. And, and I said, well, listen, there's one flaw in what you're thinking. That's not what drives pastors. We're not in it for the money. That is not what motivates us to do all that we're trying to do. We are doing it because we believe this is what God has called us to do. We, we're doing it because we believe it makes a difference. We believe that we're doing something not just temporal, but for eternity. And, and that is what drives us. And that is what motivates us. And that was what drove Billy Bell. Not driven by money, but driven by an eagerness to serve. Not lording it over those who trusted you, but being examples to the flock. Not domineering. Jesus said to his disciples one day in Mark 10, he says, You know that those who regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them. And their high officials exercise authority over them. He said, Not so with you. Not so with you. This is what they do, but not for you. What you are to do, he said, is to be a servant. To be a servant. Not lording it over, but to be a servant. So Peter said, be an example. Live in such a way that others will want to follow you as you follow Christ. And that's Billy Bell. He was living his life. He was conducting his ministry in a way that others, and you heard many other testimonies today, who wanted to follow Christ as Billy Bell followed Christ. He always served willingly. He always served eagerly. He always served living as an example. I, I never knew a moment or saw a moment that Billy Bell was living on this side of being a shepherd. 
I always saw him living on this side. Willing, eager, an example to all of us. That's what Peter's talking about. And then Peter went on to say, as he described what a good shepherd is like, he said, and when the chief shepherd appears, yeah. he's talking about the second coming, when the chief shepherd comes again, then he makes a promise to those good kind of shepherds. He says, you will receive a crown of glory that will never fade away. Yeah. It will never fade away. Now, Jesus is that chief shepherd. That means that there's not another shepherd like him. He is the one that we all are under his authority. He is that chief shepherd, and he is coming back. And when he comes back, the shepherds who have conducted themselves as the Bible scribes will receive a crown of glory. It's not a crown that makes them a ruler. It is a word that means a prize, a reward. A sign of victory. And it is a gift, a glorious gift, that gives glory to God. Because God is the reason that that shepherd is able to live that way. It is God working through him. And he says, it will never fade away. It will never lose its luster. It will never lose its value. It will always be bright and shining. You know, when I walked into Billy's office a few days ago and saw those rewards, saw those prizes that he had won, yeah. I mean, they were impressive, yeah. but they were 30 years old, yeah. and they were beginning to lose their luster. Yeah. There were scratches on some of them. <laughs> they were not as bright as they used to be. But I want to tell you, someday, when Jesus comes back, Billy's going to get a crown of glory that will never lose its luster, will never fade away, will always be a tremendous value, and always give glory to God. That is our story and testimony about Billy Bell. To God be the glory for the great things that he has done through our brother in Christ. Let's pray Our God, we, we thank you that when Billy was 40 years old, your Holy Spirit touched his heart and he immediately came to you and he laid his life on your altar and he never looked back and he did not withhold anything from you in serving you. And Lord, we thank you that you worked in him such a powerful way that, that he is a, a model for us. He is an example. He has impacted all of us. Yeah. And Lord, we're so thankful that we've had the blessing of knowing Billy Bell. And we pray for Joyce and the family, that you, you are a God of comfort, that you would comfort them in just an overflowing way. And Lord, I pray that None of us will forget the legacy of Dr. Billy Bell's life and how he served you. May this be a model that we'll emulate as we live the rest of our life, that we too receive that crown of glory that does not fade. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Acts 13 says this. David, after he served his generation according to the will of God, fell asleep and was buried with his fathers. That's true for Billy. Uh, Billy, after he had faithfully served his generation, and I think we, we saw today that, that he has faithfully served the, the reason why he was in, on this earth. The, the reason why God had called him at 40 years old to give his life to Christ, he faithfully served since that day. He faithfully served his generation. He did it according to the will of God. And he fell asleep. And he's with his fathers. Uh, the, the question Billy is asking today is, is, is where are you? It is your question today. Uh, are you faithfully serving this generation, your generation? Uh, are, are, you, are you living out the reason for why God has brought you into this world and, and has kept you alive this long? Uh, are, are you just playing games and, and hoping that the Sunday in the bind bind that you'll just get in? Because of friends or family and mama's faith, daddy's faith, somebody else's prayers. Today is your day to live out, to begin to live out the reason why you're here to your generation. So that you too, when it's all said and done, can fall asleep with the fathers. It, it would be imprudent, Billy would have you to say, that was to say today, it would be imprudent for us to think that in a crowd this size, that all of us are ready for the kingdom. Right. It's impossible. There's somebody lost in here today. Uh -huh. but because the Bible says, broad is the way that leads to, to eternal damnation, and many there will be that find it, but, but narrow is the way that leads to eternal life, and there will be very few that will find it. Some of us think we're in there, but we're not sure. We're given an invitation today. This is Billy's invitation. You, you heard it from his sister already. He's extending another invitation because that's Billy. There's no quit. There's no quit in Billy. I've traveled with him uh, when he was sick. There's no quit. He still hasn't quit. He's given an invitation. Today is the day. If you're here today, there's plenty of ministers around. If you're here today and you're not sure where you're going to spend eternity, all you got to do is just lift your hand and one of us will take the time and come to you right after the service and we'll make sure that you know for sure where you're going to spend eternity. Is there a hand? Is there a hand anywhere today? Is there a hand anywhere? Is there a hand that, that says, I'm, you know, I'm not sure and I just want to be sure. I'm not sure and I just want to be sure. There's still an opportunity for you to come. The Bible says, for if thou wilt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and if you would believe in your heart that God has raised him, the Lord Jesus, from the dead, that you can be saved today. You can be saved today. Just pause in one moment, because Billy wanted us to end it, but this is his invitation. He's given another invitation. If there's a hand, we'll be happy to talk with you. Is there one? Is there one? And seeing none, I trust that you're all are in the right place. That you all are satisfied with where you'll spend eternity. That you all know for sure that when you die, you'll see Billy again. But that you'll see a risen Savior. We thank you. We praise you. We pray for the family. God bless you. Praise the Lord. I tell you, what a dynamic message. And we want to thank all of ministers, everyone who played a part in the ongoing celebration for Dr. Bell. Thank you, North Garland, for your service to our music ministries. Thank you, New Creation Bible Church. Now, the repast is going to be at Hampton Road Baptist Church, right around the corner, okay? And um, if there are any specific instructions that I need to give, the, I know it's not for everybody here, but we have a family only, Sister Joyce. And friends, okay, some friends, okay. So it's right around the right around the corner, Hampton Road. And you can see Dr. Dean, he knows where that is, okay? Amen. Listen, we're gonna turn it over now to the funeral home, um, to the Bell family. We are here for you. You have a lot of friends. Just take a look around. 
This is just incredible. Yeah, and the uh, internment uh, will be Tuesday. Um, Billy served in the United States Air Force, so this is why we're not having today. It will be Tuesday at the National Cemetery. Amen. At 1.30. At 1.30. Thank you.